Express.js is actually one of the original frameworks within the Node.js ecosystem. However, it continues to survive even to this day in 2021. It remains a popular choice and is actually one of the few frameworks that is actively mentioned within the documentation for all the major cloud providers. So in this lesson, we will look at how you can get started with Express.js. We will be using TypeScript for our journey and we will look at a few key concepts within Express. So let's go. To ensure that you can follow along, we start off with an empty directory called Express Example. Now the first thing that you need to do is to initialize a new package.json. We do that with the npm init minus y command. Now once we have the package.json, we can start installing our dependencies, which for Express would be just Express. And because we are using TypeScript, we will also install the TypeScript compiler as well as the type definitions for Express. Once the installation is complete, we will open it up in our IDE, which in our case is VS Code. Now in terms of configuring TypeScript, we will use the installed TypeScript compiler and execute it with npxtsc, passing in minus minus init to initialize a new TypeScript configuration with some key options which are root dir, which we will set to source, and output directory as out dir, which we will set to lib, and we will enable source maps, which allow us to debug the compiled JavaScript from our TypeScript source code. We will look at that further on. Now we need to make some minor modifications to our package.json. We plan that our main application entry point will be source slash main.ts, which means that our main output JavaScript application entry point will be lib slash main.js. So we set that up within our main field within package.json. Now in terms of compiling TypeScript, we will add a new script target called build, which will simply invoke the TypeScript compiler as tsc. TSC will automatically pick up the tsconfig.json that we created in the previous step with tsc minus minus init. Now in terms of starting our compiled JavaScript, we will create this command called start, which will first execute npm run build to compile the TypeScript to JavaScript and then execute node lib main.js to execute the compiled JavaScript output. Now let's create our main application TypeScript entry point. We create this file called source slash main.ts and within that file, we have a simple message variable pointing to the string hello, which we log to the console. Now we can execute this TypeScript file by using the npm start target that we created within our package.json. We open up the terminal, execute npm start. This compiles the TypeScript to JavaScript and executes the compiled lib slash main.js. And you can see the string hello log to the console. Now, of course, we can continue to develop the application using the terminal and debug using console.log. But since this is a beginner friendly tutorial, I will show you how to use the debug tools within VS Code. We can set up a breakpoint within any portion of our code by clicking on the sidebar within VS Code. For example, we can set up a breakpoint to execute right before the console.log statement. Now the next step is to set up a launch.json configuration file within VS Code. Open up the run and debug panel on the sidebar and click create a launch.json file and select node.js. This creates a base launch.json and you can see that it automatically picked up our application entry point, which is lib slash main.js. It picked this up from the main field that we set up within our package.json. Now the only manual modification that we will make over here is to add a pre-launch task to execute npm build, which will compile our TypeScript to JavaScript before executing the compiled JavaScript. Now, since we enable source maps by passing in minus minus source map to npx tsc minus minus init, VS Code will automatically be able to map back from the executing JavaScript to our TypeScript source code so we can debug our source code without having to look at the compiled JavaScript. So all that is left for us to do is to execute the application by pressing F5 or using the launch program button on the left. And you can see that we are debugging our TypeScript source code and we can hover over any of the available local variables, for example, message to see its value, which is of course the hello string. Our debug session ends when we press continue and there are no more breakpoints in our executing path. And you can see any console log statements in the debug panel. Now for the rest of the lesson, we will be just using npm start to execute our application whenever we make modifications to our source code. But now you have a nice setup within VS Code if you run into any issues and you want to debug them yourself. Now let's pump up the font and start looking at Express.js. Now the key thing that you need from Express is the default export which comes from Express.js which we store in a variable called Express. This default export is actually a function that we can invoke to create our Express application. 
it is conventional to call this app. Now, before we start listening to HTTP requests, of course, we need to identify an empty port and it is conventional to use the port 8080 when doing local development. Now to start listening on this port, we can invoke the listen method on our app. Now, like many things IO related within Node.js, this method is asynchronous. And if you want to be notified when listening starts happening, we can add an event handler to the listening event within the app. And that's it. We've successfully created our first Express.js application. And if we execute npm start, you should see the message listening on localhost 8080 once the application boots up. We can open this link up in our browser and you will see this message cannot get slash. Now this message is being returned from Express.js, but we haven't set it up to return anything meaningful yet. If we open up the Chrome developer tools and look at the network tab, we can see that it is returning the status code 404 not found. Now let's give Express.js some folder to serve for its HTTP content. We will create all our static content within a public folder, which is conventional for normal web development. And we will create our root file called index.html. We will put some very simple HTML content within this file, which will be a simple div containing the text, hello express. Now with this public folder in place, we still need to tell express to serve this as static content. This brings us to the concept of middlewares. Middlewares are reusable pieces of functionality that can be used within an express application. Middlewares are added by the use method on the app object. There are lots of middlewares available for express on NPM and express actually ships with a number of them built into the express module as well. And in order to serve content from a static folder, express ships with this middleware called express.static, which takes a folder name as an argument. Now with this middleware in place, and our HTML content within the public folder, if we restart our application and visit localhost 8080, you can see that the index.html content is now returned and we see the text hello express. Now we can continue to hand code more content within the public folder or even use some static site generator like Next.js to create the content that will be served from express. But static content is normally served from a CDN anyways. So let's look at the key value proposition for express which is its API framework. Now, if you want to use JSON payloads with Express, Express ships with a middleware called Express.json, which we can use just like we used Express.static. Now, any request that has the content type application slash JSON will automatically get passed into a JavaScript object by this particular middleware. We will see that further on in one of the requests. We will be creating an API that maintains a list of to-dos. For our use case, a to-do is something that has an ID of type string, a completed Boolean property, and a message of type string. Now, normally you would maintain all data within an external database, but for our simple use case, we will simply maintain an array of to-dos in memory within our application. Also, databases normally maintain their own IDs, or we could use something like a GUID, but for the simplest case, we will add just an incrementing number and store the last value in this variable called current ID. And that's it, we have a simple in-memory database. Now our first API endpoint is going to be get slash to-dos, in which case we are going to return all the to-dos that currently exist within memory. And this is pretty easy with Express. We create an API endpoint for get with app.get. We provide the path to the endpoint slash to-dos as the first argument. And then we get access to the request and the response for this particular HTTP transaction. In our case, we simply use the response object and its send method to send back a JSON payload containing all the to-dos that exist within memory. And we can verify this endpoint by visiting slash to-dos and we can see the JSON payload returned within the browser. Now, in addition to get, other HTTP verbs are also available as methods on the app object. So we can use app.post to handle post requests and app.put to handle put requests and app.delete to handle delete requests. Let's swap this one back to get and look at other examples. Within REST, it is conventional to handle a post request to a collections endpoint to add another item to the collection. So we add a method app.post for slash to do's to handle that particular case. Now we expect the user to pass in their own message that they want for this particular to do as a part of the JSON payload. Now, because we use the express.json middleware, if the incoming request has content type application slash JSON, 
the payload will automatically get passed into a JavaScript object and we can access that from request.body. In our case, we want to access the message property from the incoming request body. Now, whenever you accept some input from a user in an API payload, you should do some validation on it. In our case, we will see if message is empty and if that is the case, we will set the response status to 400, which is bad client request, and then send back the details that no message property was provided. Finally, we do an early return from this particular API endpoint. Otherwise, we create a new to-do item by setting its ID to the current ID and incrementing that for the future requests, adding the message as this particular to-do and setting the initial completed value to false. We push this into the array of to-dos that we are maintaining in memory and then send this newly created to-do back to the client so they are aware of its new ID. Now, unlike HTTP GET, we cannot simply test HTTP POST within our browser by entering a particular URL as that will trigger a GET and not a POST. So we will look at a better way on how to test this in a bit. But before we do that, let's add our final API endpoint, which will be to delete a to-do by a given ID. Now, unlike HTTP POSTs, delete requests do not allow request bodies. So in order to accept the ID, we accept that as a part of the URL. The colon syntax is used to parameterize parts of the URL. Later on, we can access this from request.params. In our case, we parameterized into the ID property and that is what we fetch from request.params. Just like our POST request, we ensure that there is an ID present and if not, we will return the status 400 with the message no ID in URL. Otherwise, we can simply update our to-dos to exclude any to-do that has the same ID as the one that is passed in. Finally, since we have updated our to-do array, we will return that back to the client so they know the updated value. Now let's talk about testing our API endpoints. We could do that with some external tool like Postman. However, there is this excellent extension for VS Code called REST Client, which is what I normally use. If you don't have it already, I highly recommend you install it as it really helps you play around with HTTP. Now back in VS Code, we will create a new file called todos.rest within the spec folder. All .rest files will be handled by this particular extension within VS Code. First up, we will create a variable called server, which will point to our API root. Now the first API that we created was for get at the server slash todos. We write that up and we get this nice button called send request. And if we click that, you can see that we get back the empty list of to-dos that we initially start with. Now the next API endpoint that we created that we haven't tested yet is post server slash to-dos with content type application slash JSON with a message in the JSON payload. And of course, if we send this request, we get back the to-do that we created with the ID that it was created with, which in our case is 1337. This brings us to our next API endpoint which can be used to delete a particular to-do with the given ID. This endpoint is delete server slash to-dos followed by the ID in the URL, which in our case is 1337. Once we send this request, the newly created to-do gets deleted and the server comes back with an empty array. And we can also verify that by invoking get slash to-dos again as well. Now we could stop here, but there is one more concept with Express that is definitely worth learning. If we look at our to-dos API, it's currently mixed in with the rest of our application code and this can quickly become hard to maintain when you have multiple APIs. So let's start by taking everything that has something to do with to-dos out of this file and putting it into its own file called todos.ts. Now, as soon as we paste it in, you can see that we get an error at every usage of app as that is not something that exists within this particular file. Express has this thing called router, which can be used to create a lightweight app. We bring router in from the core Express module. And now we can create a lightweight Express app with just the routing features by invoking the router function. Now with this variable in place, all our errors go away because router is compatible with the way that we were using the Express app. Now, of course, if we are creating a router for a particular purpose, it's nice to give it the name that signifies this so we will refactor app within this file to be to-dos API. This kind of refactoring is where TypeScript excels, so we don't have to do much more than a simple variable rename. Now let's see how we can wire this to-dos API into our main application. 
Fortunately, a router is just another middleware, so we use app.use passing in the todos API. And that's it. We can jump back to our terminal and restart the server, and then open up todos.rest file to play around with the API again to verify that it's working. We can get all the todos, create a new todo, get all the todos, delete the newly created todo, get all the todos, and do anything else that you want to do. Now refactoring your API into its own self-contained router opens up one more opportunity for better maintainability for you. If we jump back to our main.ts, we can actually provide a path that the todos API will be mounted to. As an example, we can mount it to just the slash API endpoint. Alternatively, you can even start versioning your APIs by mounting this particular version of the todos API to slash API slash v1. And now if we restart the server, we can jump back to our todos.rest file, change the server URL to be API slash v1, and then start playing around with the todos API and you can see that it will continue to work as expected. Now, of course, there is a lot more that we could talk about with Node.js and Express, but in terms of Express.js programming API and concepts, this lesson should have you pretty much covered. In terms of other things that we could talk about, there would be general programming best practices, which is something that we do quite a lot on this channel. If you enjoyed this particular lesson, smash that like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one.